Hello, uh, my name is Nobuhito Mori from Kyoto University. I'm going to talk about ensemble wave climate projection based on humidified models. So this is results of the Cow Creek project supported by WMO and JCOM. The number of the authors are over 20. So today I'm going to show you the uh, 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 major contributor of the project in this slide. So uh, wave climate changes are important uh, for coastal protection and uh, uh, coastal morphology. So we have been discussed how wave climate change uh, can be projected uh, following latest uh, global climate projections. So uh, CALCRIP is the uh, acronym of the Coordinated Ocean Wave Climate Project. So we want to make a comprehensive wave climate projection based on the latest uh, global suction model projections. To, pro to project wave climate, we we use uh, sea surface wind, U10, or uh, sea level pressures uh, depend on the uh, uh, model. So we try to increase the number of the uh, input, global circulation mode output, and we also want to try to increase of the wave climate uh, projection as well. So today I'm going to talk about our latest uh, results uh, uh, for IPCC R6. So CalCRIP has uh, four uh, groups. One is uh, historical wave climate, uh, which uh, we want to uh, make a data set of the uh, uh, wave long-term wave hindcast results, which is important to validate or uh, compare with uh, observed uh, wave data set. So this is a, a group one. And the group two and group three uh, uh, wave climate projection. One is a global scale, the other is a regional wave, regional uh, scale. So last uh, component of the project is uh, a development of the coupling between the global selection model and wave model, which is important to uh, estimate the feedback wave field to the uh, atmospheric circulation uh, or others. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, global wave projection results. So uh, in phase one, uh, uh, CalCRIP has been uh, launched in 2011. So we did five different uh, wave climate model projection and uh, to make an ensemble to estimate mean wave climate. So after that, we de designed uh, to make a more comprehensive wave climate projection uh, increasing the uh, uh, model scenario. And we also expand the target to uh, extreme wave climate. We also uh, started to uh, make downscaling of the wave climate projection uh, to increase uh, resolution along the coast. So this is uh, uh, one of the typical figure from uh, CalCRIP phase one, which uh, was implemented in IPCR 5 in 2012. So uh, this is five uh, wave climate model ensemble results for mean significant wave height. Blue color indicate uh, uh, increasing mean wave height up to 10 meter, and uh, brown color indicate decreasing mean wave height up to uh, uh, 10 percent. So uh, uh, there's a very typical uh, ocean where mean wave height is going to be increased because it is due to the uh, decreasing ice extent in the Arctic Ocean. And, and then uh, less of the mid-latitude, both northern and southern hemisphere, wave height, mean wave height is going to be decreased. So uh, in uh, offshore of the European continent and uh, Japanese Pacific side, and Northern Indian Ocean, uh, we projected decreasing of the significant wave height close to the uh, seven or eight percent in phase one projection. Then after that, uh, in phase two of the calculated projection, we increased, we changed uh, uh, 
scenario from SS to the RCP scenario. So now we deal RCP 4.5 and 8.5 for uh, climate uh, impact. Then uh, we increase, we model uh, from uh, two to three to four. Uh, we use two different dynamic wave model, which are uh, wave of three and one. And we also use two different statistical wave models. Then uh, we uh, also expand our wave projection, including 90% and 99 percentile of annual and seasonal significant wave height. So this is one of our results, uh, uh, how uh, a past wave climate can be a, a validated against satellite data set. So uh, we validated uh, historical uh, or past wave climate forced by the uh, uh, historical uh, wave climate situation. And then uh, the different characters indicate different forcing and different wave model. So it is very clear that uh, 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 model bias has uh, largely depend on the uh, wave model. For example, uh, this cluster indicate wave, historical wave projection based on the uh, IH Canterbury year. So uh, these are almost can be categorized into the same group. So uh, we realize uh, wave climate highly depend, bias of the wave climate highly depends on the wave model. So then uh, this is a future changes in wave climate. Uh, so here future change means uh, uh, future minus uh, present day. So top panel indicate uh, mean wave height and the second line indicate 99% of the significant wave height. And third line indicate mean wave height and the uh, bottom line indicate uh, wave direction. And the middle line indicates uh, future changes in uh, RCP 8.5 and uh, light line indicate results by RCP 8.5. So for example, if we want to focus on the mean significant wave height change, uh, a higher emission scenario indicate a larger uh, future change signal, although special distributions are pretty similar to each other. Then uh, 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 this result for mean significant wave height is uh, very close to our calculate phase one results. And additionally, uh, for 99 percentile of the significant wave height uh, shows uh, similar spatial distribution, uh, although uh, magnitude is slightly different from uh, mean significant wave height. Uh, additionally, for mean uh, uh, significant wave period change, the uh, spatial distribution of the mean significant period change is pretty different from uh, mean wave height change in the Pacific Ocean and other ocean uh, uh, basin. Additionally, uh, last few year, last uh, bottom right panel indicates future changes in mean wave direction, which is very complicated. Uh, uh, spatial distribution depends on the location. So future changes in uh, mean wave direction uh, can be uh, projected up to plus minus 15 degree, depends on the location. So uh, to summarize these uh, different uh, wave climate indicators. Uh, this figure indicate combination of the changes of significant wave height, mean period, and uh, wave direction uh, along the coast. So in mid-latitude, starting from the European uh, continent, uh, east coast of the United States and East Asia, uh, this area both mean and the significant wave height will be decreased 
uh, however, uh, in a uh, high latitude of the uh, northern hemisphere, south, sorry, southern hemisphere, uh, both mean wave height and the significant wave height will be increased. On the other hand, uh, uh, in uh, wave climate in low latitude, uh, only mean significant wave height is going to be decreased up to uh, 10%. So based on uh, this analysis, uh, future changes in uh, wave climate uh, can be uh, quite different depend on the ocean basin or uh, coastal, uh, different coastal regions. And then uh, this is a contribution of the different sources of uncertainty, include, including uh, differences of uh, global circulation models, and uh, uh, differences due to the uh, wave modeling and the differences due to the emission scenario. Of course, the uh, impact of the uh, global climate model is the largest. However, uh, uh, impact of the uh, wave modeling has significantly changes in uh, future wave climate projection. So we need to uh, carefully uh, analyze uh, future change signal, including uncertainty of the uh, uh, different sources. So this is a summary. So uh, we, we uh, summarize our latest wave climate projection uh, based on the CIMI-5 models. So both significant wave height and wave period can be increased or decreased up to uh, five to 50%, uh, depend on the ocean region. region. So uh, these wave climate changes uh, shows uh, up to 50% of the world coast uh, has a kind of uh, risk uh, due to the wave climate change. Thank you very much. This is the end of my talk.